They communicated with us last night, and, uh, you know, we wish um, the, the player well. We wish Bolden well, obviously, that there's a recovery. You know, we understand what, what uh, can happen in this game, unfortunately. Um, and, and so the Patriots are going to focus on them and making sure that they're, they're doing what they need to do to, to get ready for their season. Um, would have loved to work with them, but obviously understand that you know things come up and we're always um, able to adjust and adapt and we'll we'll practice and we'll get work in and and we'll see where we are here at the at the end of the week on Friday. Does it maybe change how you approach the final game uh, on, on Friday night as well? Uh, I mean potentially you know we'll just go through our practice days here and we'll see where, where guys are and how they feel and Try to do uh, what we think is is best, and you know, some guys may play, some guys may not. After watching uh, last night, uh, what maybe what are some of the things you saw on tape that you didn't maybe see live that you liked, maybe didn't like? Uh, you know, I thought we covered kicks well in the second half. I thought we had three tackles inside the twenty. I thought some young guys showed up. Uh, in that regard, I uh, didn't like. Um, you know, I thought the ball security was probably better from our from our running backs. You know, there was some you know, big emphasis throughout the week. Um, you know, I liked the fact that we got you know had seven pass uh, breakups, seven PBUs. Um, you know, I liked the fact that we finished with the football in our hands in a, in a four minute drive. You know, I think we have to to execute um, a as a whole, you know, our, our, our ability to throw the football and the ability to catch it and the ability to be in the right spots and protect and all those things. So we'll keep working on that. You mentioned seven PBUs. How do you feel like this, the young guys in the secondary competing for these back-end jobs ha have done with the competition? So I think they have. I think that uh, you, whether it's on defense or special teams, Anthony Kendall showed up as a, as a special teams contributor. Um, you know, Trey Avery continues to improve. Um, you know, we have different guys working through there at, at safety and, you know, between Garrar and, and Marsh playing inside and, and outside, you know. So it's it was, it was fun to watch, you know what I mean? We played hard and I know guys were tired and, but that's what, that's what's supposed to happen. And, you know, you don't feel as tired when you win. You don't feel as sore when you win. Just in a tough spot on, on that bouncing punt? Or I thought so. I mean, I thought Kyrus did exactly what he was supposed to do. You see the replay, he's pointing, and I'm standing there hearing him yell. It's a 28-yard it's a kick with a bounces back 12 yards. So um, I, well, I would love to sit here and say, man, we're going to need more awareness and we need somebody up. But I think that was just kind of one of those that that's the way the, you know, that's the way the ball bounces, I guess, so to speak. But, he, you know, they're competing and they're trying to – you know, keep the guy away from the returner. They don't expect a bad punt, and it bounces back. So, got to line up and play again. That's what happens in football. How do you like the way uh, Justin Murray, it seemed he got really involved in, in the rushing game? Um, well, just, you know, I think that you have to look at it from, from a couple different – there's been some improvement. There will be some things, you know, that it, that he has to get fixed and maybe that we we do a little differently. Um but there's, there, I thought he was good in pass protection and uh, had, had some nice blocks, but also had some ones that, that we have to get fixed, you know, the, the, the hold and, you know, being able to come down and, and seal that guy off or, you know, on the front side. So, you know, I, I like the emphasis that Justin has had on, on conditioning and finish and, you know, play demeanor and all those types of things. And then just some little details that, you know, would like to get, you know, corrected here this week. How much is, Boy, uh, is a guy that you were complimentary of early on in the offseason? What have you thought about his first two preseason games? I think he plays strong at the point of attack. I think he, um, you know, is similar to, to Wesco. I think he's a big-bodied guy that can can go out there and try to neutralize some of those edge defenders and, you know, had some, you know, some really nice blocks on the outside. You know, had one that probably needs to be better uh, down there on the goal line, you know, blocking down and – guy crosses his face but you know Thomas is you know going to keep working and he'll show back up tomorrow and and be ready to go Did Julius help himself on, on special teams as well as uh, on offense 
Yeah, I think Julius showed up on special teams. I think, you know, just seeing those things, sometimes if he's the backside on the first kickoff, of, you know, making sure that he trims the fat and squeezes. And But I don't think Julius is, is doing anything to, to hurt himself and, and certainly you know, made him a captain yesterday for a reason, you know, embodies what we believe in. And, um, you know, had the drop in practice, had the drop early in the game, but, you know, made a heck of a catch down there in the end zone. So. Those are all things that we we try to look at and and appreciate. From the film, from the film that you watched, what did you see from Malik maybe that you didn't see on the field in your assessment last night? I mean, I saw him you know, play fast when he when he you know felt like the pocket wasn't there. Um, you know, we still need to stop switching the football, which we we've told him, and we'll you know continue to rep. You know, I think maybe for quarterbacks that don't scramble as much in practice or aren't going to get hit in practice, you know, I'm just trying to think about how, how we rep that, a guy taking off and having the ball in his right hand and then running and, you know, trying to keep him from, from switching it. And Malik knows that. Like, that's this is not a secret. But played, played fast. You know, when he took off, was decisive. Um, you know, continue improving with uh, the timing of things and, and making sure that he's going through his progression so that his timing is there. You know, I'm sure he'd like to have the one back from, from Nick Westbrook, you know, probably just pulled the string on a little bit, but also, you know, had some balls that again, you know, Chig knows he needs to come down with. Um, and then just the coordination of the interception of, you know, making a great decision. You know, if, if we need that ball thrown in the alley, then, you know, if the receivers, for whatever reason, not in the alley, you know, not forcing it in there and knowing it's cover two and just finding a, a place to, to get rid of the football so that we're not putting it in harm's way. I've seen Caleb uh, come along here during camp, Mike. Caleb. Cal uh, Caleb Murphy. Oh. Um, good. I mean, he factors in pass rushing and he, um, you know, continues to try to find a role on special teams. Love his attitude. Shows up every day ready to work. Uh, had a, had a great rush in there, matched the hand, didn't leave his feet. Quarterback brought the ball down and, you know, had a, had a nice sack, impacted the, the, the play. You know, would like to see him try to tomahawk that ball when he spun back in on the, on the second sack. And there's just some few, I would just say, awareness things, you know, sometimes on the screen or, run, you know, run game, things like that. But as far as rushing, he's – Showed an ability to, to win and you know, rep them more this week. Third series, you guys had the, the third and four, I think, and, and you give the ball to, to Spears. Show a little bit of confidence in him there, and then also what you think of, of the run that he had there on that third and four play. Plus territory. Yeah. Um, well, you want to know why we called it or what we. He's a little bit different on third and four to go with the, with the run, and then, you know, I guess what, you, what did you think of, of his run? Just trying to pick up the first down any any way we can. Um, thought it was a good run. Thought that, uh, you know, was able to, to get out on the corner and make a miss and, you know, kind of got caught in an awkward situation, just making sure that he protects himself. And he did a much better job with the with ball security this week. There's a, you know, really cool picture of him jumping over uh, the safety and in the, in the ball is exactly where – you know, Justin and, and Timmy and, and, and the Titans needed to be, um, which is great, you know, being able to make those moves. We talked about the stiff arm last week where the ball was there, and Tajay is a coachable kid, man. He wants to wants to do it right, and, you know, that was a really cool play, but most importantly, you know, him him leaping over the guy and the, and the ball not being away from his body was, was probably the most impressive. You didn't get much kicker information out of out – of game situations where where do you stand on your thinking about kicker and uh, you know you can't create the situations it's hard yeah it's hard I mean whether you want to try to you know for example fourth and two at the 50 it's probably a coin flip wanted to try to give Stoney a plus 50 and that ball needs to be better than the 17 yard line and Stoney knows that right so that's you know in my mind in that game you know, looking at whether we go for it or, or whether we punt it, but wanted to try to get Stoney a plus 50 because that was a point of emphasis. And I know that your question was, was about the field goal kickers, but just using that as an example, felt like I could kind of create that one. 
Um, you know, I think just the consistency. You know, I think that those guys, um, Caleb and Trey, um, of the consistency each and every day. And sometimes, like, we, we're not going to be able to get all those kicks, but we're going to be able to evaluate them in practice. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, you know, seeing where we're at and seeing if we can create those same situations this week um, and, and trying to make a decision. We haven't seen him in a bit. You know, it wasn't uh, just. Uh, you know, I mean, he's he's not available. Um, this, you know, when he, when he's ready to go, he'll be back out there. How's Kevin been from? Kind yeah, of you say game. these guys is first name, but I don't know who you're talking <laughs> yeah. about. I got nicknames for all of them. Um, good. I thought he settled down. I don't think he was his, at at his best to start, but uh, settled down and. Played well and, you know, had a tough holding call there on the punt team, which, you know, watching it again, I don't think that the league, I hope the league doesn't want that called where you, you stop a guy, you know, with two hands in his chest and then try to shed him to, to go down on the punt team. So we'll see what they say, see what their interpretation is and go from there. But, um, you know, G G Gibby's reliable. Um, he, he's able to... To, to do his job, to communicate, and so that's you know where he is, and you know, that's how it went last night. What's the rationale for getting Mason in there for a couple of quarterback snaps? Mm, Mason, Mason's out there every day. Mason, Mason's probably during the times that he spent on our practice squad, probably runs more than any player that we have on our roster. Whether it, it I mean running receiver playing DB throughout practice that you guys may or may not see. And uh, I wanted to give him the opportunity. We had practiced it. I mean, when I say practice, like we walked through on Friday. That, I guess that was the extent of practice. And he was, I was like, you want to do it? And he was like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, let's do this series. And then made a play and then we put Malik in and converted. Where's he in the course of his receiving development? Um, I, I think good. I think some of the details, you know, maybe it's like all these guys. But Mason shows up. He, he catches the ones that, that we throw him. Um, had a great conversion, got drilled, limped off, stayed in the game. I mean, it just – guys that keep showing back up and getting back in there, it's, you know, it's easy to evaluate them because they're out there. I guess another week with numbers at, at receiver, a little bit banged up there with Traylon and and now Kyle and and Kyrus. Uh, well, we've been okay there. Uh, we've been we we've had some bodies, and you know that'll be more reps for for some other guys, and you know. But we'll see if you know once I finish up here, they're still early on in the treatment process. You gonna need a quarterback? Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine us. Need to sign a quarterback. Looked like uh, or, or Tim Kelly was was pretty complimentary of Malik's uh, decision making quickness in the in the first week. Did you see continuation of that uh, against Minnesota? Any any change in that? Or? No, no. I meant um, I don't like the decision to to throw you know the end cut. That you know, don't like that decision. Um, but I thought that there you know. Again, with some – everybody's responsible, right? It starts with protection. When we got the protection, we, we were able to, you know, progress through and find two third down conversions, you know, one there at the end of the game on third and four. Um, again, if the protection breaks down and Malik's got to take off, that's a skill set, and that can be a strength. When the protection is there and Nick is there on the, on the through, you know, We've got to hit it. You know, Malik knows that. Like, we can't short arm. we got to let it go. I'm sure we'd love to have it back. But keep keep working. You know, excited about, you know, his ability to, to use his legs as a weapon. Uh, but then also remain a passer. Would like to see him on the shitty snap from Brew. Take care of the football. I mean, it's all – I mean, that's a turnover waiting to happen. Knowing that he's out of the pocket and then just throwing it taking care of his body. You know, I felt like just 
run out of bounds, all these little things at the end of the game for a minute. Hey, bud, loved the call, loved everything that we did. We just need 11, 10, 10 yards to get a first down slide. Um, you're not trying to score there. We don't want to go and put the ball in harm. All these little things that, you know, situationally is great that it comes up, you know, that they're, you know, you, you convert a first down, they don't have any timeouts, it goes to the two-minute warning, that game is over. So a first down is really all we need. You know, we don't need you trying to take off and, you know, outrun everybody and let a safety come in and, and, and give you a hit that's not warranted or, or put the ball in harm's way. Just get down and, and we'll kneel on it. Because you described all of those things. How has he been as far as seeing that, recognizing that, and not making that same mistake twice? Good. Really. You know, I mean, he's been good. You know, we talked about the early on in, in the, um, you know, situational work, you know, in, in the situational work of um, the two minute, you know, and then the other day, you know, in, in Green Bay, you, you know, looking at the, at the tape, like, like nobody moved when they called it a false start. You know what I mean? Like nobody moved, receiver didn't move. They you know, practice, made a mistake. But it was a good situation to say, okay, here's the process of it. It's gonna start on the ready, but the ready includes the referee walking in, spotting the ball, getting past you, and then Clay or whoever the, the referee is blowing the whistle. Me explaining that, like, we can't do that when refs aren't here. So, Corey just snapped the ball, right? And so, it was like, well, no, we didn't put it ready for play means that the official is going to pass you, right? And then they're going to blow the whistle. Then we have to snap it and, and have a play ready. So, that was good that that came up. I'm sure the next time that you get a, a you know, the ball is going to be, the clock's going to start on the ready for play and not the snap, that Corey will be better, Brew will be better, you know, Malik – they, Corey snapped the ball. So in that instance, it was a really cool situation just to be able to say, guys, if there's a review and it goes to a running clock or there's a 10-second runoff, this is how it operates. Instead of just continuing to show them, these guys feeling it and saying, okay, the umpire is going to come in. It's going to spot it. They're still going to give them time to back away, and then they're going to blow. So it was that's happened the other day, and so hopefully we can create that this week and – Get some officials here. I think they're going to still come, so we'll try to get that you know covered again this week. We'll go into your decision about whether or not some of the guys who haven't played yet in the preseason, whether you're playing or not, and what are kind of the pros and cons of getting guys work and before the season starts. I mean, just want to try to get everybody, you know, ready for the season, but also try to get them to the season. You know, it's. Somebody's got to play, you know, and, and but just making sure that they're conditioned and, you know, Harold hasn't played, you know, Harold may need to go out there and, for example, right, it's a lot of different things that we look at, you know, individually, like to, you know, see how we come out of practice the next couple of days health-wise and, and then be able to to determine that these guys will go out there and play for, for a little bit, I don't know how much or how little. Do you feel like the first team offense got enough work out of those two two days in Minnesota that uh, may not be necessary to run them out there Friday night? Um, I mean, I thought we got good work. I don't know how much is enough or how much is, you know. You know DeAndre's played in a lot of football games. Ryan's played in a lot of football games. And Derek's played in a lot of football games. Other than that, everybody that was healthy played, you know. Wesco had some good blocks in practice. He had some good blocks last night. Had some things he needs to fix, but wanted him to go out there, you know, because what happens is the less guys that you play, the more snaps that the special teams guys get on defense or offense, and the more snaps they get on special teams and, you know, run out of IVs. What's so that? Chestnut's style that makes him successful. What are some things he does well? Well, I think he's got good quickness for for a bigger guy. He's got you know quick feet. He's got a good little jump cut, cool little vision on that touchdown. Kind of started out here into the C gap. The, the Mike jumped out there and 
you know, bursted through there and, and scored a, a cool little touchdown. Um, you know, just been been a reliable runner for us, you know, and it, we talked about him being able to continue to catch the football and help and find a role on special teams. And he just, he's a worker. He's probably one of the, the best finishers on our football team. When you see guys, receivers, and I'm sure you guys watch practice, you'll see 36, you know, hauling ass down the field when he doesn't have the ball, when he probably plays without the football. As far as putting the ball in harm's way. And it was cool. His mom was there last night too, so that was – that was cool. Saw her before the game on a side, just walking by. And so what a, what a game for her to be at for, uh, for Julius. As far as putting the ball in harm's way is concerned, Malik has had three fumbles in two games. Is that more circumstantial, just where he's hit in the pocket, or is there something you'd like to see him do to protect Did they the put the him? fumble on him, the one that we whistled into his shins with the snapper? I don't believe so. No? Okay. Just strips it. Um, I mean, sometimes the strips, you know what I mean? It's like we all know that the quarterback every week is, you know, if you look at the stats, right, the quarterbacks lead the league in fumbles. They're the easiest targets. They're the ones that are, they have the ball the majority of the time, the pass rushers. So, you know, strip sacks are tough. You know, we, we got to run those guys by. And if, there, if, it's, if there's one hand on the ball or it's down at our side, then I'm going to put it on the quarterback. I mean, if he's trying to step up and pull through, and you've got two hands on the football, you know. So I, I more or less, you know, when it's out here and, and you can see it off the body or you're switching it on contact, those are the things that we'll just keep, you know, coaching and teaching. Thanks, Mike. Have a great day.